welcome to Logistic Talks. My name is Eric Gantier and I am the president of the engineering and manufacturing sector. Today I am talking with Hans Thibault from Atlas Copco about reducing emissions in logistic operations. Hello, I'm Hans Thibault. I'm responsible for uh, logistics within the business area compressor technique for Atlas Copco. Hans, thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning for this uh, logistics uh, talks uh, session. Thanks for hosting us to, uh, to talk about uh, sustainability. Thanks for having me here. Well, Our pleasure. Um, something I would like to start um, asking you is um, everybody knows about these uh, climate changes, yet not all the companies are acting. So tell me, why is Atlas Copco leading the pack? Atlas, Atlas Copco is a Swedish company, of course, so we have already a long heritage of, uh, of working on sustainability. Um, it's in our genes for a long time already, but also now I think we really go uh, second, third or fourth gear, I would say. Uh, so uh, we subscribe to the scientific-based targets based on the Paris Agreement. We want to improve our own exhaust of CO2 by uh, 46% um, by 2030, starting from 2019. But we also want to improve the, the exhaust of CO2 from our uh, business partners. So officially it's then called Scope 3. Eh? So there we have a target of reducing 28% by 2030. Well, that's a, that's a very high target. So tell me internally, do you have uh, you have do you have a budget? Do you have a team? How does that work? We do not really work with budget as such overall. I would say we always work case by case, also through all the different streams within transport. We also look for solutions. Or the most polluting solutions are also the ones which are most expensive. Right. So normally, by looking for other solutions, you can improve the impact on the environment, but also reduce your costs. How do you identify what is it you could do which would bring the, the bigger impact? I'm thinking about uh, packaging. I'm thinking about buying sustainable aviation yeah. fuel. I'm thinking about nearshoring. So how do you rank your yeah. priorities? We always look for business cases. Huh? If you have a better compressor, you, 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 you create, you have a, a new, new investment or an R&D project for a new, for a new compressor, right. where we can realize, realize a saving. Internally, we, we look for economical solutions. Huh? What if we put more stock instead of flying? Hmm? That, that's one of the things we do. And actually, we can reduce or increase the stock quite a bit to reduce air freight. And that we accelerated now by adding a cost for uh, every ton CO2 that, that we create. So in every business case, we do that. So and that makes that we, we can invest more um, with, this, with, with this payback on, on, on CO2, with, right. which, we, which we have given a, a certain value. Okay. So this, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, packaging. Yeah. You, did you have any um, experience in uh, packaging? Yeah, with that we do for many years. Okay. I'm working 28 years for the group. Um, as long as I'm there, we are using this recyclable packaging. Okay. Right? And we are not, we use biodegra biodegradable packaging. Right. Um, we still use airbags. Of course, we are a compressor factory, so we, we, we like to use air. Some people discuss this. We have done the calculations, and there again, for us, all in all, it's still better because the plastics can be recycled as well for sure and it's a lot later than a lot lighter than the paper or, or carton filling so also there we do we do this calculation okay so tell me in terms of uh, sustainability what would you say that atlas copco already achieved so yes. uh, if if you look to logistics part i uh, it, in the past the focus has been using better efficient transport methods i would say so we have been using a lot of uh, intermodal transport for example, in Belgium, everything goes to the harbor of Antwerp, goes with inner barges already. So that we saved already 100,000 truck transports from, oh. from, from us to, to the harbor. So okay. CO2-wise, that's, that's already enormous. Um, that's, that's a big one. Um, we have also reduced air transport quite, quite, quite a bit already, um, where, where possible, of course. Um, and we started to, to to explore other things like like SAF as well. There is no payback immediately. 
we are aware, so we do not always have a business case, as, as we discussed before. There are some areas where we try to trigger the market as well and are willing to expand to, 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 to do some expenses as well to make sure that our partners are, uh, are willing to go along uh, with that as well. So this is what you did at Atlas Copco so far. Would you, um, did you have any challenges at, uh, at some point? Some, as I said, like in South, eh, there is no payback, and there we just uh, we just take the hits, and, and yeah. we are willing to take the hit and to to invest there. In most of the other areas, there is there is still a business case. Eh? Um, we still believe that uh, we can, as I said, polluting costs money, and we believe that we can, by investing in in, in the right methods, um, we we can get to, we can get to a lower cost as well. When it comes to CO2 and when it comes to transport, we're willing to help in a little bit here, here and there. But in the end, we believe that by investing, transport will come with solutions, or the transport companies, together, of course, with, with the airplane manufacturers and, and, and forwarders and, and, and sailing industries, um, they will come with solutions also that in the end, with a lower cost, will have a lower CO2. I can give you one very nice example of that one, which we like. Yeah, it's because it's a combination of of, of uh, logistics execution and, um, and use of compressors. Many of the new uh, sailing ships or cruise ships, whatever, they are executed with a lot of compressors that create uh, air bubbles at the, at the bottom of the ship and it reduces the resistance of the, of the ship heavily when sailing. Wow. So it means that net, meaning after the consumption uh, of the compressors, there still is a saving of 8% on the fuel. So that's, that's fantastic. So you it see is. by investigating and even by investing in compressors and in our machines, we come to a, to a better result overall. And that's what we really believe in. Hans, tell me something. I noted that um, your targets uh, are for 2030. So mm -hmm. a lot of things left to be done. What are the uh, next major steps in front of you? Okay, so I, I would say that major steps is reducing of air freight further eh? because logistic-wise, air freight is the biggest polluter. And unfortunately, apart from SAF, there are not really uh, good solutions yet. So we go more for local for local for sure. Eh? It's good for the customer to have a short lead time as well. So wherever possible, we will try to go more local for local. The next part then, of course, is uh, to make sure that we have an... Um, our own operations, our sites that we work on renewable energies. That's the case in most cases, but, but not yet everywhere. So I see also a tendency even to own a couple more operations where we can go for our own solar panels. When we rent, that's sometimes more difficult. Makes all sense, Hans. Yeah. So tell me how a company like DHL could help you achieve your targets. Well, first of all, I think it, it's key to, to measure also. Eh? To measure is, is to know and have an, an honest reporting, which, which I think you do. Uh, that's, uh, that's all fine. We want you to invest in, in the best solutions when it comes to, to CO2 consumption going forward. And we would like you to use, um, for all lanes at least, also uh, these, these solutions uh, where, wherever possible. Um, and apart from that, I think we should explore some new areas together as well, where we can contribute to a better world as well. Very good idea. Yeah. Tell me, there are things that are already working mm. very well. What yeah. are they? Yeah, I think in general it works rather well. Eh? I mean, you have also subscribed to the, to the SBTI targets as well. I think it's important to, to keep the full chain into account. That has not always been, been, been the case in, in, in the past. Eh? Sometimes you said we will reduce our own operations, but you are not including the fleet. It's really important that, uh, that the whole fleet is, is, uh, is included, which, uh, as I understand, you subscribe to the SBTI targets as well, uh, is for sure happening. Right. So I'm very happy to see this happen. But apart from that, as, as usual, I think it, uh, we like, or we would like that it all goes a little bit faster, huh? yeah. uh, that the targets are a little bit brought, brought forward. That is important because the world is uh, getting hotter uh, every day. Huh? It is, it is, so, unfortunately. Yeah. Hans, we're getting closer to the end of this uh, session. I wanted to ask you, with here in Belgium, still very early in the year, what could we possibly wish at Lapscopco and you for 2023 around the sustainability actions? Or oh, that we make a quantum leap step as, as planned. And honestly, I'm rather confident that uh, that will happen. Okay. Well, Hans, thank you very much again. It was a pleasure to be with you here in Berlin this morning. And we wish you all the best. Thanks a lot.